Ontario settlement agencies are reeling over huge funding cuts by the federal government. In the past two years, they've cut funding by over $75 million. The Ethiopian Association is one of the agencies left picking up the pieces. Established over 30 years ago, they're now struggling to keep up with all the newcomers that need help integrating into Canada. Aslich Boyana is the only settlement worker at the Ethiopian Association. She used to work full-time before the cuts, now she works part-time. 17 hours a week, it's very much limited. So sometimes I take like few people, like asking them what their issues are. So if I estimate like, okay, tomorrow I have to serve these people. So the next call, I'm gonna say no, I cannot. So that person, he might not call back. And he might go by his own or he might, you know, end up like a lot of frustrations. And sometimes people come and I tell them, okay, I have these people lining up for services, and they cry. So obviously we are overwhelmed with client flow. Clients who just flow, but who don't get like adequate service. It wasn't like this before the cuts. When Azlech arrived in Canada, the center helped with many of her settlement needs. When first I came here, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. I met with this counselor. He connected me to places where I can volunteer and get experiences, Canadian experiences. He connected me with people from my area so that I can meet them and feel comfortable and start my life. Explore things and explore the city and accessing community centers and um, accessing some uh, school so that I can have my bridging programs. I settled myself, I got housing and I've been attending the language so you know I remember when I came there like I feel like home. A study shows immigrants across Ontario like as alleged gain huge benefits from settlement services. The first province-wide study on the effectiveness of these services was released two weeks ago. What the study did was the study confirmed that yes, these services are needed, yes, these services are quality and effective, even more importantly, and yes, these services are making a measurable difference in, 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 the, in the settlement and integration of, of immigrants, um, especially in the area of employment, for example. Ontario settlement agencies are losing the vital services they spent decades establishing. In the past two years, the federal government cut funding to dozens of agencies. In December 2010, we unexpectedly received um, in the mail a letter from Citizenship and Immigration Canada, CIC, um, that stated basically that our funding was being discontinued as of um, March 31st of the following year. So basically it was about 13 weeks notice. We lost about $350,000, um, which represented about 40% of our entire agency budget. So we lost um, Spanish language counselors, um, Vietnamese, um, Chinese languages, and some South Asian languages. To be honest, we don't know how they're being served at this point because we can't communicate with them. A number of other community members are coming to South Asian Women's Centre. One of the reasons, I think, is because they have gone to the agencies that they were previously served by, and it doesn't appear as if those agencies are able to serve them anymore because they've been cut as well. So the agencies that are around are absorbing not only their own cuts, but the clients of other agencies that are not being served, which is a huge burden. At the Ethiopian Association, they had over 25 staff before the cuts. Now, Azalech is one of only four staff remaining. It's really unthinkable to see like um, those programs are just gone once and everything is coming up on just um, a part-time position. We try to coordinate volunteers. We try to give our own time for people who are really in crisis, but still there is a huge gap, I see, a huge gap. You have to fight to get into the system. That really needs a lot of support from back. So people are lacking that support. Because of uh, the current situation of the Ethiopian Association, we are frustrated and I'm really sad that this association has been turned to this kind of limited position right now. 
Every time I have some problem, I have to wait until the schedule of some staff is here before I would be able to come and I will always, always be able to meet somebody who could help me out. But uh, it's not the same situation right now because the staff are not coming every day. Their work hour has been reduced. The federal cuts were over 80% of the association's budget. They were forced to close the center they used before and move to a smaller space. We had like three levels. So we had like a lot of service. It was huge, like language classes and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of like office we had. But right now just, um, as you can see, it's just one room. And uh, even we don't have like, did you see the partitions? Like if, if clients come up with very sensitive issues, we come downstairs and we have to talk to them in here. Aslich does what she can with her limited hours. Just giving them resources, calling, connecting. I mostly I wouldn't follow up. Connecting and leaving and connecting and following up everything until you know you see the change. So that's a huge difference. As a community member, I know I'm responsible. Sometimes I put my, my hours, like my, my personal hours, to support them, to volunteer. But Within the organization framework, I can't do that. Those who can't get help will get stuck, says the owner of this Ethiopian food store. Many of many of Ethiopian people who are shy. If we say something no, we don't even fight for our right. We don't fight what's going on, why it happened, like there is nobody else asking that, that kind of question. So even if like, they don't get help from anybody or from any community, they think that's the way they live. They just go back and sleep. You know, that means they don't get help. The ministry responsible for immigration says the cuts reflect Ontario's declining proportion of immigrant intake. Compared to past years, they say immigration to other provinces is up, while in Ontario, it's down. But still, more immigrants come to Ontario than all the other provinces combined. These unilateral decisions are being made without consultation with the provinces, and that's unfortunate. The need uh, is so great in Ontario. Uh, the demand to come to Ontario is, uh, is, is the highest in the country. We are still the largest destination of new immigrants anywhere in Canada. When they do arrive in Ontario, they stay. We're the highest retention rate in any other part of uh, the country. And the cuts that occur it seems inappropriate because it's an investment that we're making on our newcomers. It's, a, it's, it's, it's an investment we're making in our future. Finally, it ends up like in huge crisis. Like, what are you going to do as a person who just came in, who doesn't know anything in the environment, who doesn't, some people, they don't even know, like, a single word. So that is a huge crisis. Just leaving the person on the street with no house, no food, no nothing, which, which is going to be like another, like another job for the government indirectly. Yeah, and I think that costs a lot. I don't know. It's really hard to find someone who has been like treated by, you know, mental issues and those um, drug addictions and those things. It's really hard to see them back in life, you know. It's lost. We could have stopped that by, by a little service, like by using different techniques and a lot of, uh, you know, supports. This is Diane Ruiz for People Power Media.